Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice a ulu ay sa lahat pedestrian accident ng yam na happen na a Rock Island Cafe crosswalk. Ang mga mnerdir na huli ping ang mirror cross la ra el mnerdir na bela lam la el mnerduli yar adra Ministry of Justice o ay sa lahat ng mga hospital ang yam possible broken bones ng mga hospital under receiving a treatment el alta ang mga in depth investigation ng gilet tagi dal accident masel bon yam Agora ang ob al information ng kumusap ito 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 mo ay sir gita atra po ay. At tarami ang alay sa Ministry of Justice, Honorable Vice President J. Udu Sangabaw Senior, alagotan mo Vice President, ang unmo ular sell Good Steward Award. So every month, ang anong itirigay ng police officers ang mamili exceed, itirigay gita ang ito mo tong ok, liti mga chiefs, director mga chiefs, ang mo tong ok, lupang gila ang A Minister of Justice, a Vice President, a Militar and Gay Gay, and more say, Mong Segit and Award of Good Steward. Mel and Mandra August, a Gale Police Officer 3, a Telly Thomas, Gay and Illus and Good Steward Award. A Tianga, Blil Tianga, Alfandania Vice President, Mania Fifty Dalla, Lobangela Gift Certificate. Tingilti, a Police Officer 3, Telly Thomas, Lingin Man Longi, like a case investigation, Sengi. Report writing and he, my witnessing and near at Sela courtroom. At Taramiang Al Isrem Oche, a donations, and Nara Abilung, Gloria Sali, and Niam Ne donate and Mora, a division of corrections. Ne donate a one box of Gangum, one box of Curie, one gaze of cabbage, Matul gaze of Malra, twenty loaf of bread, twelve cinnamon bread, my sixteen Berlin's of bread, Mran Masaula. Abilung ang niya mal mililit katrir tiragal ang algay del guk mil tilor emlo golbus ang malot katrir manguk mlo donate tagal mas ilul guk ngarin yaga ni. The reminder ang Ministry of Justice sa wasing alia September 29 yar buli sa mo o mo lal site ra adal daga lausit belt. Diri ako mo tmau talla al mo sa magister ang ni niu ang gire lawrio asit belt ram ni niu. Mailang ang mo September 29, mo utang ang practice sa bakal up, pasal o mamagal, arang algiw agi din ng lakarsit, yun sumandang lakarsit ng algiw, mo utang ang mo ra Red Cross, mo apply ng ania lakarsit ng Red Cross, dahil sa bira adal, sa bira adal Red Cross, mo masteri adal uspe ay agi din lakarsit, tuh tagal si ilm arakarsit. At tanam yung alay sa yung alay sa judiciary, arang isel lere ng tilob do, ng cry for help, pelada. At judiciary ang milus ng iyong makmooywi at talukol at tukol ang miligyan makmalayamar. At tiyak mo lwase, Help! It is with great concern that I write to you, my representative or someone with authority that can hopefully do something about these disturbing events that is damaging our democracy and tearing our constitution if muted. The judiciary branch is corrupted and we need your help. I have been employed by the judiciary over a great period of time. I was hired during the very beginning of Chief Justice Arthur Nirakulsong's time. And integrity have always been a part of our DNA as a Palau Supreme Court employee until today. So, a little background to start off. Ludi De Olgotaro is the chamber clerk for the office of the Chief Justice, which is a fancy word for being the CJ secretary, that's her primary duty, and yet she has taken the task of being the highest administrator for the Palau Supreme Court, as she has been the acting deputy administrative director, DAD, because that position is vacant. And she has been acting for a couple of years now. I don't have a problem with this, but she is incompetent of doing this job, and yet she has been acting DAD for a couple of years. They all is the Acting Management Information Systems Director and also Acting Chief Archivist. How can one incompetent person who can do one job be responsible for the whole entire judiciary? Time and time again, employees and department heads have tried numerous times to reach out to the Chief Justice with these concerns and have directly informed the CJ about his secretary, and yet, here we are. This administration under Sitcheng Nirai Galau 
has been a bad joke compared to C.J. Arthur Miracolsong, as Miracolsong wouldn't have allowed such idiocracy. These are some examples. They all didn't follow the rules and regulations of the judiciary for being one time, so the clerk of court, Alison Songbao, disciplined her. At least she tried. Right after the disciplinary, a memo suddenly came out stating that even though they all is under the clerk of courts, her leave will only be approved by the CJ and CJ only. In other words, it's telling the clerk of courts to leave her alone as she is untouchable. In the history of Palau Supreme Court, it's the first time a memo has come out addressing an individual. This is very disturbing. During Typhoon Sergei in 2021, they all convinced CJ Nirai Galau that, she, that he should declare a state of emergency for the Republic of Palau, something our president usually does. And for some strange reason, the CJ agreed. The state of emergency was approved and the marshal delivered to the voice of Palau 87.9. They all later realized after getting scrutinized that this was ludicrous idea and she had made an idiotic mistake and called the marshals immediately to remove the state of emergency from 87.9. Time and time again, she has ridiculed this branch of government and made a circus out of which we all know especially being employed here for such a long time that this branch of government should hold the highest integrity and standard, as I know you all agree. They all is the only employee of the judiciary that the former Siche Nirakolso called her a effing liar, right to her face and told her to leave his office. And what does the CJ now do? She gets a promotion, the highest uneducated public position occupied by an incompetent individual that leaves us in awe and in question on what our forefathers actually fought for. And I know for damn sure it wasn't for this. In October 2021, they all wanted to be armed. And this is not a joke. The Chief of Marshal Johnny Sogao, for some odd reason, entertained this ridiculous idea and did attempted to do so. Thankfully, Madam Vice President Sangabao did not agree to this and we all thought that was the end of that. But they all didn't take no for an answer and pressed on Chief Sogao to make it happen. Chief Sogao went to see the VP three times until the Vice President wrote a response letter citing the law as only law enforcement are authorized to handle firearms. As to why the Chief of Marshals entertained this injudious request, you might ask, it's because every department head at the judiciary is on a yearly contract. Every time a department head voices out their concern, it's half-assed, half-hearted, irresolute, not because they're disinterested, but because they understand that going against the all might mean their contract might not be signed as she, as she has input over each department head's contract. This is not insinuating. These are words that have, that have come from Siche Nirai Galau as he has stated that they all knows what she's doing and to comply with whatever they all says as she is the DAD. They all has taken that statement literally as she summons the marshals to her office just to hand her a paper from the printer and sometimes to order the marshals to go pay for it for her pizza and bring it to her, to her at her office. You might think this is silly and somewhat petty, but the taxpayers deserve so much better than this. And the judiciary's employees' morale has declined ever since the all and Mirai Galau took over. Just a few years back, it was an honor to work for the judiciary. Today, I am counting days until I retire and leave this place. I used to come to work believing I was doing my civil duty to my country, but to be treated in a way by some uneducated know-it-all, I have lost my trust in our system and I feel like a guest in my own home. And now we move to Keith Nir Omle. 
This is the same individual who committed a crime and evaded the Bureau of Public Safety by going off island. And when he committed a crime, he was a police officer employed by the MOJ BPS. You can get the full story from the Bureau of Public Safety if you ask officers that worked with him during that time, like Sergeant Sabino Kyota or Sergeant Virginia Umayam. Nir Omle is now Sergeant Marshal, a first of its kind that was never a rank since Siche Mamoru Nakamura. If you ask any court martial, even the Chief of Marshals, Johnny Sogao, he will agree as this rank was unnecessary but a waste of funds paying an unqualified individual that until today, while occupying the rank, does not meet the qualifications and I dare you to look into it. Most of the marshals have seniority over Nir Omle and could have applied for the position, but because of their integrity and their respect for the judiciary, they knew that the qualifications for the position were not going to be met and so they passed. And because they served under Siching Irakolsong, they understood the validity of the Palau Supreme Court's high standard and most of all, accountability. Until this day, Nir Omle is getting overpaid, getting special treatment from the DAD and the Chief Justice. The only marshal that comes to work in civilian clothes overrides the Chief of Marshals and gets away with it. The only special, unique, set of skills that he brings to the table is that he is in charge of the physical training, PT. And you would think that because of this that came with the job description, one would excel, which he hasn't in lack of better word, Omokru. Nir Omle has once before, a couple of years ago, while being a marshal, punched an individual while that individual was handcuffed and broke his own hand. When he broke his hand, compensation as there are with, wait. when he broke his hand, the same court took care of him. He got his leave, got paid, and many believe he got workers' compensation as there are witnesses that have seen the check dispersed to Keith Nir Omle. The reason I bring all this up is that it's deja vu all over again. But Targon B.S. being the victim while on duty and was struck by Keith Nir Omle, a sergeant marshal. But the difference is, Marshal B.S. has not been taken care of. Instead, his salary has been deducted because he ran out of sick leave annually and he is not being compensated with workers' compensation as H.R. Diop Louis has told B.S. that this is the same thing as getting a flu. I don't even know how to explain that. I think you, as a public official that represents me, should at least find this disturbing. Sergeant Keith Nir Omle has cocked his weapon during working hours with a round in the chamber and pointed in two court employees and explains that this is just a horse play. Once he did it to a marshal, once he did it to a marshal, Kane McGay, and twice to Noel Sadang. About seven months ago, Sergeant Nir Omle also discharged his weapon inside the marshal's office, shooting the floor while a rookie marshal, Weister Mayor Sakli, and Chief Marshal, marshal Chani Sogao were both present. Chief Sogao covered this up. Yes, that's the assumption, because there are no reports of this or any type of disciplinary action, which leave us court employees to wonder, what the hell is going on here? Another court employee that works for the property management office named Noel Zada is also a victim of the judiciary. He was injured during working hours while following instructions from the judiciary, which Sergeant Nir Omle was supposed to help but chose not to help because apparently he is a high ranking official and won't get his hands dirty. Sadang injured his back on duty and until today has a limp to his walk because of the injury. And he too paid for his own medical bills, used his leave, and did not receive any workers' compensation. Again, favoritism at its finest. What we find very disturbing 
is that the case for Keith Nir Omle finally got char charged and filed at the Palau Supreme Court and it's ridiculous as it is a misdemeanor. How can officer A sergeant violently strike and permanently disfigure a subordinate and forever change their way of life both personal and professional and be a misdemeanor? Is this how the system works? Are you all going to sit on our seat at OEK and not do anything about this? I voted for you and you are my representative. Please do your job and protect us and deliver us from this I voted for you and you are my representatives. Please do your job and protect us and deliver us from this among other bus. In addition, there have been multiple times where employees, mostly marshal and a few probation officers have worked after working hours and don't get overtime compensation, nor comp time, nor any other form or compensation. When this was brought up to the administration, their response was, the employees did not follow the rules and regulations of the judiciary. The rules are written as follows. It is scheduled and approved 24 hours in advance whenever feasible, except in unanticipated emergencies. Overtime must be requested by the immediate supervisor and approved by the CJ. The DAD is, admin the DAD is administration as far as we're concerned as the CJ has said that whatever they all says, it is what the Office of the Chief Justice says. So, the only reason employees were working overtime is because DAD personally called employees and instructed them to come to work during the last storm or typhoon, which all complied as she is the DAD. But then, no one got compensated. And if you have the authority to look into this, you might find that one employee has been getting overtime and no one else. And that employee is Keith Niromle. Employees didn't have 24 hours to request as DAD instructions were to come to work immediately and did not have 24 hours to request. This is just absurd. This is not just from me, but I represent all judiciary employees as they all had inputs. All employees are questioning the judiciary, all but three. The three who thinks everything is fine is HR Ryob Louis, who does not understand the primary duty of an HR, as he should be protecting employees and assisting us rather than teaming up with the all and stepping all over judiciary seal. Deol is the second, and then Si Cheng Iraigalao, who's blind and deaf when it comes to the employees of the judiciary. In conclusion, this is not a tattletale, but simply a cry for help as we are struggling to survive in this perpetual darkness, trying to do our duty in a toxic environment that is decaying our very thread of democracy. Komsulang al amoy taseset temiu, Al mo iwertiang, e orang al mo mo guard o teli wulgiram. Aruba kal Dios lolomol melo sa balik. This is from a unanimous judiciary employee, and it was written on August 18, 2022. Etiang ablel si siring mora si Chay ni Raygalau, President Surang al Wips Jr., Vice President sa Abaw Senior, President Hokons Paules and all senators. Speaker Sabino Anastasio and all delegates, Tiabelao, Island Times, TMC, Diaz Broadcasting, Masalvador Telamsi. Asi che ako kumlan nga respond rin nga ilmar tayo the letter ng kayo the unanimous judiciary employee will cry for help. Matiyang awase. First, as the administrative head of the judiciary, I welcome and am open to constructive criticism of the administration and operation of the judiciary. I do not, however, address a ghostwriter's allegation of wrongdoings 
or mismanagement relating to the, to the administration and operations of the judiciary. This is, because all, this is because the judiciary, as well as the chief justice, and those working directly under him as the accused are entitled to confront their accuser and to test the accuracy and of the accuser's allegations. Meaningful testing of an accuser allegations to determine their truth and accuracy requires face-to-face -face confrontation between the accused and the accuser. This process cannot be had where as here. The accuser has decided to hide their identity. Allegations of corruption, as well as allegations that defame a person's character and ruins one's reputation, which cannot be vetted because the accuser has decided to remain anonymous, merits no considerations at all. Second, the administration and operation of the judiciary is governed by the Republic's constitution and laws. The Judiciary Code of Conduct for both justices and employees, personal rules and regulations for the employees, and written orders, policies, and guidelines that are issued by the judiciary from time to time. The five-page letter, despite being quite lengthy, does not cite to a single violation of any provision of these authorities by the Chief Justice or anyone working directly under the Office of the Chief Justice. Third, Part 8.1 of the Judiciary Personal Rules and Regulations provides a grievance procedure for the judiciary employees who have actually grievances or complaints against the judiciary or its administration. The procedure is available to all employees, and the employees know and are aware of this grievance procedure. Assuming the ghostwriter has genuine personal grievance against the judiciary or the chief justice, they could utilize the grievance procedures. Otherwise, the judiciary and I, as the judiciary's administrative head, cannot even begin to entertain the grievances. Finally, assuming the ghostwriter does not have a genuine personal grievance, but simply disagrees with the current administration and the operation of the judiciary. Part X of the judiciary's personal rules and regulation grants this person or any employee of the judiciary, for that matter, the right to, re to present their views free from unreasonable restraints or reprisals. See Part 10.1, the judiciary's personal rules and regulations. The views may be presented formally or informally but should be done in a respectful and appropriate manner. Any employee of the judiciary, including the ghostwriter, may speak their mind, give an opinion, and show evidence and supporting facts for their views. See Part 10.6, Judiciary Personal Rules and Regulations. Instead of ut utilizing foregoing procedure, the ghostwriter has opted to go public with their complaints and views, and that is their decision to make. However, if the ghostwriter desires the judiciary or the chief justice to consider their views on how the judiciary should be better managed, or would like the office of the chief justice to consider and look into unvetted allegations contained in the letter, they should utilize the judiciary's procedures that govern such topics and appear in person so that meaningful, productive, and serious discussion and consideration can be had over their allegations. Ela kuktara mayang al ice, mayang al ice la Ministry of Health and Human Services. Other MHHS or ice la other blue wase mla suspend the vaccination until further notice. Yala ngani ngayon kami, emotang alkora 487252. Dira kal taramiyang al ice la MHHS at to ice la wase tmo sendra medical team al mora blue lab al mo ang sera other blue lab. Dira kal durok la agar agobid al mo ang lobong lobong get tigay gid al medical team al mo. 
Lardok ang kanyang Lardok 25th anniversary anniversary softball tournament tenya morngir el al weekend the Labor Day weekend September 2 mo 5 morngir a Mewns Field ang al open and mora ko et teams mar mora open malsum ang kanya kami yung mautang al gor abra bela force et tige olaba mul information kaniy sera mande sel Huen ODC ma Pacific Anti Corruption Network Amle host ra training el girela investigative financial reporting. During a tag of training, and dira kamlan niya four thousand dollar worth of equipment el girul masdira abra media mo help pertigay the Palau Media Council. Maguk tara ays ang mga niya sa le Palau Half Marathon mo niya el al sabado at tiyang a omura track and field mo ro hospital and mo tiyang a start ra four o'clock ra tutaw. Ito ang sponsor ni Sel Pacific AUS Sports, ma PTFA. Matsukum ko mga rarar at 4 o'clock at 2 tao, ay magtaka ng alilmosoro, ay mames na ang other remote na rarar, malakam tal at rin. Ito rin ako kwa sorry lomes, labor at rag and field the lomes na rarar ng mormult. Ako tara ay sa Sel PIIAA Cross Country, o ulmo or sila August 31st. Mula nga 319 registered, kampera last year din na 252. Ay gan rogul fable high school amo kampit et yang abekal Wednesday until October five. Trigel top fables al Marzil a al polgar nga udod ang mosab in Marcelle Asia Pacific Invitational. Pagi maloni tulwase mo tanga al donate yel sumangan nga karmi mo tanga lom kadong ra poy ko shiba ra seven seven five seven zero three four. Aklugo yung ania championship ra gal pekal elementary cross country yung ania 234 runners tilga omu ra maligen mo ra ngatpang ra 4 pm at mo 5 pm malsumo ko mo magal ra tulong alin lai maligen mo ngatpang malubog mo ra orioral lo magal mo ra bubble dab at mo tanga ng mo soro at mo albuto karang alo karang mo straral Maguk tara ay sa at Taiwan ang mga deliver sa other half ra stimulus. Ma Ambassador Jessica Liu sa August 25 ang milsa ng sa other half ra sa 2021 economic stimulus grant ang mga Minister of Finance ni Agaleb Udoy Jr. Matagi ng stimulus ang mga kawo ay get 26 sa project ang Raymalig Multil Multilatl posubes ay Raymalig Multilat Road Improvements. I'm a league Mongami Road Improvements. I'm a league Tabadal Waterland Connections. I'm a league Nekkeng PPUC Power Plant Road Design and Constructions. Kayang Aldak Waiting House Constructions. Kayang Aldak Repairs and Improvements. Malgayo Capital Toobe Road Improvements. Ngarar Alab Ulimang Road Improvements. Ngarar Quabs Road and Parking Lot Improvements. Ngat pang maabuob nekeng road improvements, ngat pang ibobang road improvements, SR Simisu road improvements, SR Ngarsu road improvements, SR Karmalyang road improvements, SR SR Tabrangasang road improvements, ngaramlungi residential area waterland expansion and improvements, Niwal road constructions and improvements, new correction facility construction. Ministry of Health Long-Term Healthcare Facility, Palau High School Classroom Climate Control Project, ROP UN Representation Office Project Purchase, National Archive Building Improvements, BNH Public Health Road and Parking Resurfacing Project, Ma Palau International Airport Inspection Facility Project. Telstin Mulus sa moda karogi ay 8.17 million dollars. At tara ay sa obis ra special prosecutor ang le-celebrate ra 37th year anniversary year. A OSP ang le-pasen mo la ar sila August 25, 1985. A President Whips express ra gratitude and ngin mo tirigay del alat ra OSP if mal recognize a special prosecutor April Don Cripps, assistant prosecutor Mitt Bills, Ma investigators, ma staff for tagi del office of the special prosecutor ay gan malungi luredi. A state visit tamla mo mereg, mle last del state visit tamla ramal kayo kara sera kasus mle August 31. Mle almong ngomur el alsils 
ya state visit rangar alon se am le hotel state visit amo am le era el altim ra tim sir el al sil se emo mal mon mal gim era ga gi do gul state visit re lang for the next few months mal wai send dim le gi da gup lo ice in los amlo top de el al sil se e homeral ma saul metun in na tim si please drive safe and buckle up